maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Excuse me, sir. And when do you Excuse proceed me. with the trials of the other two defendants? Within the next two weeks. Right. Now you'll have to excuse me. Assistant District Attorney Warren Penn Mr. here will be glad to answer any further questions. How do you feel about being called the mongoose? Fine by me, as long as I get the snakes. Hey, sorry I'm late. I overslept. We'll talk about it later. Let's catch him before he gets away. Left off. We expect the same results with two other indictments. Bitch! Ernie, you old dog, what are you doing here? Well, you got a big case coming up. Yeah. One down, two to go. And just in time for the election. And it's got nothing to do with that. Oh, that's not what your campaign manager told me. <laughs> just kidding me. Har har. This is my niece, Nikki Barrington. Nikki Barrington, this is uh, Mitchell Clark, our uh, district attorney and local mongoose. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Nikki grew up around here. She had just come home from New York City. Well, welcome back to Marshall Falls. We could use some new blood around here to liven up Bernie's stodgy old paper. So what do you think? Well, Bernie's stodgy old paper doesn't endorse politicians. You know, Bernie, that's what I like about you. You are one of the few truly righteous people left in the world. He doesn't know how right he is. Mr. Penn, the, the people don't
come in? Yeah, sure, come on. What is it? RJ sent me a package last night and uh, wants me to cover a story for him. How's he doing? Not good. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. What's the story? There's this guy over at Mid Valley who's scheduled to be executed next month. Tyler Nash. RJ doesn't want you to cover the execution, does he? He's convinced that the guy is innocent. Okay. You go ahead. Just make sure it doesn't interfere with your work on this paper. Thank you. at the front door forever. Sorry. Ah. Oh, this is totally unacceptable. I think I look stunning. Really? Whoa, so what happened here last night, huh? Wild research party, very exciting. Yeah? Well, you forgot to sign off on the net and I have been trying to call you all morning. Oh, sorry. Did you forget our seminar this morning? I did, but I've got to go to Mid Valley Penitentiary today. Oh, Nikki, they finally busted you. You're very funny in the mornings. <laughs> Ooh, now this is worth working late for. That is my Mid Valley lunch date. What? RJ asked me to interview him, do a story. Huh. <sighs> Having trouble sleeping lately. So try a glass of warm milk, anything but those. My doctor prescribed them. The dreams again. Yeah, since I moved back. So move, sell the place. I like the place. Yeah, but too many bad memories. Oh, come on, Liza. I, I'll get over it. Yeah, before or after you get addicted to those. Honey, how long have you known me? Oh, ever since second grade when um, Jimmy Lane stole your notebook and I had to beat him up to get it back. So, still worried? As a matter of fact. God, you're so annoying. Mm. Please make me some coffee. I'm taking a shower. I love you, too. Mm. So, Wayne wants to ask you out. Oh, please. He's a nice guy. Oh, he's so nice. Why don't you go out with him? Well, because I'm not the stepmom type. And besides, he likes you. Liza, you know something? You're obsessed. I mean, why are you so compelled to set me up all the time? I just want my best friend happy. I don't need a man to be happy. I like my independence, and I like having control of my life. Oh, I'd like to be out of control just one last time before I start getting hot flashes. Thanks for the coffee, by the way. Mm. You are a goddess. <laughs> Debbie, you know who I am if you remember this poem. Passions drift amongst the silken flesh. Beads of sweat drip slowly down sunken and surrendered crevices. Giving breath to conscious rapture. Nikki. It's the Mid Valley guy again. So, what's he in for? Bad poetry? Oops, murder. Oh. Well, for someone who likes to be in control, I think you picked an interesting person to interview. I didn't pick him. Uh -huh. RJ did, okay? Mm -hmm.
Where's Mr. Malone? He asked me to come in his place. Who are you? I'm Nikki Barrington. I'm also a journalist. He said he'd help me. He said he would write a story. What does that mean? It means I'm going to get to know you over the next few weeks. What do you get out of it? The chance to write a piece that might convince the state to change its views on capital punishment. So it doesn't matter whether I'm innocent or not? I'm not here to pass judgment. So what do I get out of it? I mean, you don't have a story unless I'm uh, executed. Am I right? Hmm. So who exactly is this Debbie? She's my missing witness. No, I don't know her last name, and uh, if she comes forward, I would get an appeal. Well, this was front page news. If she exists, why didn't she just come forward? Oh, she exists. Maybe she's scared. Maybe she moved. Maybe she doesn't care. The DA convinced the jury you lied about her. You're beautiful. Let's just stick to business, all right? Hey, I just uh, meant it as a compliment. Tell me about your lawyer. Nothing to say. Look, I, I don't have time to go 100 miles to get answers like that, all right? What are you getting mad at all? I'm not getting mad. I just, I, I, I don't have time to play games. Okay? I'm not playing games. My attorney was court appointed. He told me I should throw myself at the mercy of the court. I did. Here I am. A full moon kindled the white beach in front of the local bar in Marshall Falls the night Cecilia Flowers decided to take a peaceful midnight stroll. But she was not alone. Someone had followed her out of the blue moon, stalked her, and waited for the perfect moment to attack. The moment she was most vulnerable. The moment she was totally alone. Her killer sprang upon his prey like a black cat. He took her young life with the slash of his blade against the soft flesh of her neck. Cruel, cold-blooded, no sympathy, the animal drank her fear like wine. What happened to Cecilia Flowers that night was inhuman. No one should have to submit to that kind of terror. Marshall Falls, beware. There's a boogeyman out there. Cars. Stock cars. Win much? I won my share. Okay, I'm sure this is the last thing you want to do again, but you want to tell me what happened? <sighs> I was passing through Marshall Falls. I had a couple of days before a race near Portland. It got canceled, so I decided to stay on. Several people at the Blue Moon saw you there with Cecilia Flower. That's right. She was sitting at the bar, so was I. We had a couple of drinks. That's all. We left at the same time, but we both went our separate ways. And then you went to this other bar where you picked up this Debbie. Yes. Deeks. Deeks. OK, so how come no one at Deeks remembered seeing you there? I don't know. I guess we got out of there pretty quick. Then we drove to the beach. Did you sleep with her? No. We talked for about two or three hours. Then what happened? Then I took her back to Deeks, where she picked up her car. And that's the last I ever saw of her. Tyler, why did you run when you knew the police were after you? I honestly don't know. Today, Mitchell Clark, county prosecutor, makes his closing arguments in the Tyler Nash trial. 
he will most likely focus on the fact that Nash had no alibi and remind the jury that an eyewitness placed Nash at the seat Flowers, a young Marshall Falls resident. Jury deliberations are expected to be short. We'll continue coverage of this story once the jury has reached its verdict. And now, back to our newsroom. Ted? Dr. Henry, please report to ICU. Dr. Henry, please report to ICU. Dr. Bowers. Yes. Hi, hi. I'm Nikki Barrington from the Democrat and Sentinel. Ah, uh, you said it's important I see you. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, doctor, five years ago, you performed an autopsy on Cecilia Flowers, a murder victim. Flowers. Flowers, yes. You might recall that Tyler Nash was convicted of that crime. Now, in your testimony, you concluded that Miss Flowers' throat was slashed from right to left. You asked me to recall a murder case that took place over five years ago? Oh, I read the court transcripts, Doctor. You stated that the killer slashed Miss Flowers from behind using a right to left motion, and because of that, he had to be left handed. Yes, yeah, so? All right, well, isn't it possible that the killer could have slashed her from the front? I don't know. Possible? Well, if the murderer killed her from the front using your logic, he'd be right handed, isn't that so? Now, now, why wasn't that mentioned in your testimony? What is your point, Miss Barrington? Tyler Nash is scheduled to be executed next month. He might be innocent. All I did was give my professional opinion and answer the questions asked to me. Now, you have to excuse me. I'm late and I've got a lot of work to do. Yes, of course. Thank you for your time. Now, why didn't your attorney challenge the Flowers' autopsy report? Tyler, you're left-handed. What if the murderer Slash the flowers girl from the front. My new attorney used that argument as part of an appeal for my retrial. <sighs> All right. Okay, another witness for the prosecution. Roger Walker said that he saw you with the victim in your truck at the blue moon just before she was killed. He lied. Okay, why do you say that? Because it didn't happen, that's why. How could he see something that didn't happen? Sometimes witnesses have completely different accounts of the same event. Do you always do that? Do what? That little thing with your hair. How can you be so cavalier? I'm not. I just miss the simple things. Like that little thing with your hair. Good afternoon, Techly Corporation. Yes, Roger Walker, please. Mr. Walker is in Houston on business. When is he expected back? The end of next week. Is there someone else that can help you? Is there a number where I can reach him? I'm sorry, we're not permitted to give out that information, but if you leave your name and number, I'll relay the message. No thanks, I'll just call back. Nikki, you got a minute? Sure. What's up? I want you to go to Olympia and cover the state congressional runoff. What? Well, uh, can't Wayne or Liza do it? Why? I'm not up on my state politics. What's going on, Nikki? It's that thing I'm doing for RJ. Well, that thing wasn't supposed to interfere with your work on the paper. I know. Uh, you better sit down, Nikki. This came in on the wire this morning, and I wasn't going to give it to you until after work, but, uh... Newsman R.J. Malone died early this morning. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Oh, heck, Wayne is probably tired of working on that fast food toy scandal anyway. I heard his kids are giving him hell about it. Thanks. You seem tense. Oh, well, um... I've just had a bad couple of days. You know, I haven't slept well. 
what's going on. Huh? Hey, come on. I've been honest with you from the beginning. You gotta be honest with me. RJ Malone died. Oh, man. How? Cancer. You two were close, huh? Hey, did this Debbie ever tell you where she lived? No. Did you ever ask her? No. Nikki, what's going on? Come on, you're in agony here. What's happening? I'd worked with RJ for 10 years, you know? I mean, I knew it was coming, but he, he was like a, he was like a father to me. I'm sorry. What was your father like? My, my dad, uh, he spent most of his life beating the hell out of me and my mom. Is your mother living? No. Yours? No. You know, when my mom died, I truly knew that uh, I was alone in the world. Things wouldn't come easy. <laughs> yeah, I guess I know what that feels like. I got something. reach every shore and touch some other's heart. I stand near the water's edge praying for a sign that somewhere across the mist of time there awaits a heart like mine. You wrote this for me. <laughs> you like it. I'm not here and you want somebody to talk to. traces of blood, hair, or fiber from the victim found in his truck, on his clothes, or in his motel room. And there was only one eyewitness, Roger Walker, and his testimony was circumstantial. Why? Because Tyler Nash said so? Oh, please. How about this? You cannot condemn a man to death no matter what he did. It's barbaric. Are you falling for this guy? No. Good, because I wouldn't want to have to identify your body just because this guy turns you on. Liza! Well, why can't you admit that you have hormones just like the rest of us? Okay, you've hurt me enough. I'm gonna go solo. <clears throat> and besides, I don't believe his story about the missing witness. I mean, anyone can be found. Only if they want to be. Yeah, but what if he killed this Debbie too? Okay, and what if this Debbie was in on it? What if the whole thing was a setup? Oh, it's starting to sound like a soap opera to me. 
Liza, be serious for one minute. What if he's innocent? Everyone on death row is innocent. Hasn't anyone ever told you? I am so sorry. I, I, oh, it's please. Okay. Oh, forgive me, Nikki. I'm, Liza, I'm sorry, sorry honey. Oh, sometimes I say the stupidest things. Hello? Hello? Hey, it's Tyler. Hi. Look, I, uh, I hope you don't mind me calling. No, no, I, 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 I told you to. Look, we got five minutes before they pull the plug here. Well, that doesn't seem fair. I hear music. Yes. Huh. That sounds nice. Tell me about your home. You have five minutes and you want to make small talk? <laughs> you know what? It, actually, that's exactly what I'd like. Okay. Um, I live just outside of Marshall Falls, about a hundred miles north of you. I'm surrounded by trees in the middle of nowhere. That's nice. Tell me, um... What's inside your home? A lot of knickknacks, you know. It's woodsy, cozy, big fireplace. Wow. So tell me about you. Not much to say. Oh, sure there is. What do you want to know? I want to know everything. <laughs> want to know everything in five minutes? Yeah, that's a, it's a start. I used to live in New York. So, uh, why did you move back? At least, uh, in Marshall Falls. Everybody knows who you are. Oh, boy. That is not always a good thing. Anyway, RJ used to say that... writing doesn't come from big cities, writing comes from the heart. Like love. Tyler. I can see you. What do you see? I see your loneliness. I want to see you. Tyler? Do this for you. You really did this? Yeah. Does it look like your place? Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I... Is there anything you can't do? Yeah. Touch you. Hold you close. I'm going to die. I'm going to die in two weeks.
happen to be in town on the night of the murder? I saw you on that trip too, remember? Nick, you don't know anything about this guy. He is not a killer. Believe me, I know this trial inside and out. Clark, Clark went after Tyler like, like a mongoose after a snake. Nick, you're putting me as well as yourself in a very compromising legal position. I know you're about to commit perjury. That makes me an accessory. We could both face serious jail time. Liza, no one will ever know that you know. You have my word. Oh, that's great. Just great. I thought you were my friend. Don't do this. I am your friend. I am your best friend, which is why I'm trying to talk some sense into you. This makes perfect sense to me. I have never been so sure of anything in my life. I don't know. Okay, Liza. This conversation never took place. Now it's either that or you turn me in. Judge Robertson just ordered a stay of execution for Tyler Nash. For what reason? Seems his missing witness finally showed up. Motion for a new trial has been granted. Scheduled for the 11th. Nikki Barrington. Works at the Democrat and Sentinel. Bernie's niece. Give me everything you can find on her. School, friends, sex life, addictions. Gotcha. Tyler, I can do this. I can. I, I, I know every aspect of your trial. I, I was in town visiting my mother when the murder took place, and, and there is nothing about this, Debbie, that couldn't apply to me. It's perfect. I don't buy it, okay? You don't know what you're getting yourself into. I can't let you... No, 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 no. Look. All right, there is no law against my visiting you. All of our conversations have been private. And besides that, Tanaki already deposed me and filed another motion to retry. So I'm sorry, but there is no turning back. Ms. Barrington, how did you come to meet Tyler Nash? I was living in New York. Every year during August, I came back home to Marshall Falls to see my mother. Mm -hmm. I heard about this place called Deeks. I was there that night. What happened at Deeks? Shortly after the band started, Tyler Nash offered to buy me a drink. Now, had you ever met the man before? No. He told you his name at this time? Yes. What did you tell him your name was? Debbie. Debbie? Why did you do that? I didn't want to give out my real name to a total stranger. I understand. Please, go on. It was pretty crowded there. Mr. Nash couldn't get a waitress. So then he suggested we leave and go back to his hotel room. And did you go? Of course not, not with a man I just met. What did you do then? We went to the beach and talked. For how long? A Couple of hours. Now, during the time that you were parked, did you see anyone? Just a few people coming and going from the bar across the way. The blue moon? Yeah. What happened when you finished talking? He drove me back to Deeks. I got in my car and I drove home. Miss Barrington, these events took place over five years ago. Why have you not come forward until now? Well, like I said, I didn't live here at the time. I returned to New York never having heard about the murder case or Mr. Nash's indictment. And what made you come forward at this time? My mother recently passed away. I was packing some of her things for storage with old newspaper, and I came across one of Mr. Nash's personal ads. And it was then that I realized he was looking for me. Now, the murder took place between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. on the night of the 20th. Can you confirm to this court that you were, in fact, with Tyler Nash during that time? Yes. Yes, I can. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Your Honor. You're a journalist, is that correct? Yes. Therefore, one can assume that you are street smart, that you understand the ways of the world? I suppose. So can you explain why it is that you refuse to give your real name, but you agreed to park on an isolated beach with, in your own words, a total stranger? I don't know. I suppose it's not the smartest thing I've ever done. When exactly were you parked, Miss Barrington? Was it uh, 9.30 to 11.30, 10.30 to 12.30? When was it? I believe it was 10 to midnight. 
two hours. It's a long time. Did you have sex with him? No. Objection, Your Honor. Irrelevant. Sustain. The jury will disregard the question and the answer. What did you do all that time? We talked. About what? Poetry, art, music, life. You recognize this girl? The mutilated body of Cecilia Flowers. Pretty gruesome, I agree. Have you seen her before? No. She was 21 years old. Objection. There is no connection between the victim and Miss Barrington. Your Honor, there most certainly is a connection. Miss Barrington is trying to undo the conviction of a killer. Objection, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Mr. Clark, stick to straightforward and relevant questions. Ms. Barrington, I'm a, I'm a little puzzled by something. We asked for a sample of your hair. We checked it against the trace hairs we found in Mr. Nash's truck and on his clothes, and it was conclusive. Your hair did not match. Objection. The victim's hair did not match either. Objection sustained. The jury will disregard the prosecution's last statement. And there's the matter of your father. Isn't it true that he, like Mr. Nash, was on death row? That he, in fact, was executed at Mid Valley State Penitentiary in 1967 for the murder of one J. Hollis Meyer? Objection, Your Honor. This is completely irrelevant. Your Honor, it is directly relevant. It speaks to Miss Barrington's motive, a very powerful motive for wanting to get back at the justice system for taking her father's life. Coming. Hang on. Uncle Bernie, hi. Can I come in? Yeah. Hey, I was, uh, I was just about to make myself an egg salad sandwich. You want one? Not unless you want to watch me sky right all over your ceiling. What? Gas. <laughs> oh. You haven't really changed this place very much, have you? No, it's still Mom's place. You ever get the feeling that she's still with us? Always. And then she must be feeling like I am right now. Confused. Confused? Why are you doing this, Nikki? You weren't in Marshall Falls when the Flowers murder happened. That's when you drove your mom to Portland to start her breast cancer treatments. You called me every day, remember? So... Why are you putting yourself in this position? What position? Perjury. I'm not. Nikki. Don't insult my intelligence. This is not your concern. Yes, it is. One, I am your uncle. Two, it implicates the paper. There is nothing that, that ties you or the paper or the staff to this. I know what you're doing. How can I claim to have any integrity and not expose that? Can't you see what they're doing to him? It's just like what happened to my father. Your father was found guilty. And he was innocent. Damn it, Nikki, no, he wasn't. How can you say that? Have you ever bothered to investigate the facts surrounding your father's case? Or are you afraid to find out something? You gotta grow up, Nikki. He was guilty. I knew it. Your mother knew it. She just didn't have the heart to tell you about it. Your father had a temper, and one day he just snapped and he killed his boss in cold blood. No, he did! <laughs> Please, don't throw your life away for this guy. We talked to Mitch. We tell him Miss Nash coerced you into lying for him. Oh. I can't. Oh, you mean you won't? I believe him. Nikki, 
I've got a responsibility to the people in this community, to the people who work for me. If you proceed with this charade tomorrow, you can't come back to the paper. your mother that I would take care of you. Roger Walker, do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth before this court? I do. <clears throat> Mr. Walker, in the previous trial of Tyler Nash, you testified that you were at the Blue Moon on the night of August the 20th? That is correct. And that at approximately 10.30 p.m. you left the bar and you saw a man and a woman seated in a parked pickup truck, is that correct? Yes, sir. You went on to identify the man in that truck as the defendant, Tyler Nash. That is correct. Now, I'm going to show you a photograph, Mr. Walker. I want you to examine it very carefully. Was that the woman that you saw seated next to Tyler Nash in that pickup truck on the night of August 20th? No, sir, it is not. Are you sure? Positive. I've just shown Mr. Walker a photo of Nikki Barrington. Yeah. Mr. Walker, is this the woman that you saw seated in the pickup next to Mr. Nash? Objection, Your Honor, leading the witness. Sustained. Rephrase the question, Counselor. Do you recognize this woman? Yes, sir. This is the woman that was seated in the truck. Let the record show that Mr. Walker has clearly identified Cecilia Flowers as the woman who was sitting in Tyler Nash's truck on the night of the murder. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Your witness. <clears throat> Mr. Walker, what do you do for a living, sir? I'm a computer programmer. I create networks, websites, things of that nature. Would you consider your powers of observation to be above average? Yes, I would say above average. Now, we are supposed to accept your testimony. Testimony that has to be based not only on your powers of observation, but on your memory as well. So I'm sure you'll agree it is very important to be certain. Yes, I understand. Good. Now, where was the pickup truck parked? Uh, it was in the parking lot next to the bar. But was it parked, let's say, under a street lamp against a building under a tree? Uh, it was just parked in the lot. There were quite a few cars there. Mr. Walker, you don't sound terribly convincing. Does that mean you're not sure? I remember it was quite cloudy that night. Let the record show that the night of August 20th was clear and with a full moon. Mr. Walker, did you stop and look into the pickup truck as you passed by? I looked in and I... Did you stop, sir? I don't remember if I stopped, but I did get a good look. Your Honor, I ask permission to bring Nikki Barrington before this witness. Objection, Your Honor. On what grounds, Counselor? Mr. Walker has already clearly established that Nikki Barrington was not in Tyler Nash's truck that night. Your Honor, is the prosecution now going to try my case as well? Your objection is overruled, Mr. Clark. You may continue, Mr. Tanaki, but this better be leading somewhere. Thank you, Your Honor. It will. The court calls Nikki Barrington. Miss Barrington, would you kindly step forward and stand before the jury and witness? Auburn hair, shoulder length. Brown eyes, 5 feet 7 inches tall, approximately 125 pounds. Mr. Walker, 
was I just describing Cecilia Flowers or Nikki Barrington? Um, well, uh, I don't know. Why? What happened to your above average powers of observation? Could it be, sir, that you don't know? Because I am describing both Cecilia Flowers and Nikki Barrington. Mr. Walker, your testimony convinced a jury beyond a reasonable doubt to convict my client, Tyler Nash, to be sentenced to death at the hands of the state. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. How do you find? In the matter of the people versus Tyler Nash, we find the defendant not guilty. The court is gratified that justice has ultimately been done in this case. Mr. Nash, you are released from custody. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, thank you very much. This court is adjourned. Free man. There's just some papers you have to sign before you leave if you'd go with the bailiff. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, counselor. Thank you. Oh, come on, Steve. You were great. You freed an innocent man today. I hope you're right. Excuse me. This is it. This is great. This is really nice. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it is. Hey. You okay? I forgot what it was like. What? 
to be free. You know something? You're safe now. Was the truth left behind? Was your heart really all in my mind? Turn around, please don't leave. I have found, found someone to believe. Isn't love hard to know? Even fools can tell when to let go. job opening for a mechanic down on 7th. Oh, yeah? It ain't driving, but uh, it's a start. You're thinking about going back to racing, aren't you? It's the only thing I know how to do. What do you want? Five minutes of your time. Sorry. You're racing down a dark stretch of highway with no lights on. Nice metaphor. You're in my way. That's one hell of an act you and Tanaki put on. Isn't this called harassment? No, I'm just having a conversation. It's a free country last I checked. In fact, anyone can say anything you should know. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. May I go now? Nobody's stopping you. Now, don't tucker yourself out, darling. Save some energy for me. This is an absolute beauty. Where did you get it? It belonged to my father. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. No, 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 it's, it's okay. Are you sure? Yeah, go play. Oh, thanks, okay. Talk to me now, it's a fine. You're playing right-handed. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how I learned. 
What will be now is a fine... <clears throat> What will be now is a walk down the fire of furnace. You get Nash's racing itinerary for Florida? Right there. He was there approximately three months before he was arrested. Why are we looking into this? There's an unresolved murder down there similar to the Flowers case. Mitch, that case is over. No, it's not. At the time of the Florida murder, Nash just happened to be racing at Daytona Beach. Mitch, that's got to be a couple hundred miles from where the murder took place. I need to know if the race was before or after the murder. I agree. I just think we should crop it about here. Unless you run it vertically. Ah, you're right. Shows more of his character. That's a scratch on the negative. He's a slumlord. Remember, he doesn't have any character. <laughs> it's an unresolved murder near Tallahassee, Florida. Happened before Nash came to Marshall Falls. So? So he just happened to be there around the same time. Shouldn't you be out campaigning? I hear boats are scarce around here. Bernie, your niece is playing with fire. If that were true, what do you suppose that I could do about it? Convince her to come and see me. I've got some new information that might change her opinion about Mr. Nash. This one's on me. Our tax dollars at work. I just didn't hear you sneak up on me. I didn't sneak up on you. I just came to ask if you wanted to go to town for lunch. Yeah. Sure, just give me a minute, okay? Okay. Ever been to Florida? Every winter. Why? Daytona Beach? Sure. Racing season. Mitchell Clark spoke to Liza and my uncle. He's trying to tie you to a murder there. God, why doesn't that surprise me? Is he getting to you? No. Are you sure? Hi, do you guys know what you want? Yeah, I'll have the pasta special for you. I'm gonna have a cheeseburger and fries. Thanks. Great. took five years of my life. What more do they want? I mean, I... I... Hon, you can't keep blaming the world for what happened to you. You're right. It's just... <laughs> I, I wish it was that easy. I haven't held anything back. I've never done that before. Nikki. I would never... You got a lot of nerve showing up here. Cecilia Flowers was a friend of mine. You know what? Let's just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> been here for almost three hours. If you want to hold us any longer, I'd like to call my lawyer. Otherwise, let us go now. Your boyfriend put those guys in the hospital. <laughs> I'm 
Those guys started it, and there's a room full of witnesses who testify to that. Testify? You'd know all about that, wouldn't you? My phone call? Follow me. Hello? Nikki? Mitchell Clark. I'm hanging up. Does the name Peg O'Neill mean anything to you? No. What if I told you this woman claims to have been Tyler's girlfriend at the same time as you were visiting him in prison? If you want more, meet me at Largo, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Who's that on the phone? Um, the, <laughs> the paper. They want me to clean up my desk. So, Nash was charming other women at the same time as he was charming you, as you can see by this. The guy's a regular Shakespeare. He worked on Peg O'Neill. Drop a pebble in the lake and watch the waters part until the rings reach every shore and touch some other's heart. I stand near the water's edge praying for a sign that somewhere across the mist of time there awaits a heart like mine. You wrote this for me? So you dig through other people's garbage? Nash used you, Nikki. He's still using you. Do you love anyone? What? Do you love anyone? Is there anything in your life that you care about more than your career? I care about justice. I care about truth. No, you don't. You care about winning. That's your truth. your work. They said you weren't there today. Yeah, I had some thinking to do. Thinking about what? Peg O'Neill. Peg O'Neill. Peg O'Neill responded to an ad a couple of months prior to you and I ever becoming involved. And we wrote to each other a few times. Nikki, you can't believe that uh, you were the only one what do you that mean I communicated with. I can't believe with. that I, I was the only one. What am I, a mind reader, Tyler? You know that Clark had a file full of that stuff that you sent to Peg O'Neill, including that sweet poem that you wrote to me. You, le you led me to believe that that poem was written for me. And you even tried to get her to be your alibi, but she wouldn't do it. She refused. And what did I do? I, I believed you. 
I lied for you. I stood up in front of all those people in the courtroom and I risked everything for you. Were you here all night? I lied to you. With Peg O'Neill, I know you feel like I, I used you. I'm sorry for that. I've never had anyone in my life care for me the way you do. And I'm trying to learn how to deal with that. I love you, Nikki. I love you with all my heart, and I want to show you in a way that you know and that you can understand. It's just... It's just I need a little help to learn how. Want some? No. I'm gonna take a bath.
Good morning. Hey, Spread them. Spread them down here. What the hell is going on here? You have no right. This little piece of paper gives us every right. It's a search warrant. Why? A young girl was murdered last night on the beach near Canaan Point. Canaan Point is three hours away. I told him I was here last night. Oh, but of course you were. Look what I found. I have a permit for that. Check it out. How many more women are going to die because of him? Huh? Because of you? What is it anyway? What's he got over you? Mitch. The minute, Sam. I really need to speak with you. Let him go. You should put this where your boyfriend can't find it. Only town Nash. I was out driving. Clark thinks that I killed that girl. Apparently, you do, too. Running away isn't going to solve anything. It's just going to make matters worse. I'm not going back to jail. This is exactly what they want you to do. Don't do this. Can't you see that I have no choice? Nikki, come with me. What? If we leave now, we can be in Canada in less than two hours. Come on. This is crazy. God, every time there's a crime within a 100 miles of here, Clark is going to be all over me. I have no intention of waiting for him to come back, and he will come back. But he's got nothing on you. That didn't stop him last time. If you run now, everyone's going to be convinced that you're guilty. Are you coming or not? No. No, not like this. I, I really wish you wouldn't do this. Come on. Pack your stuff. What? Pack! What the hell do you think you're talking about? I said pack. Yeah, hey, it's Nikki for Liza. All right, then let me speak to my uncle. Yes, it's urgent. All right, okay, would you just tell him that? What are you doing? I'm not going with you. Oh, I get it. The second I'm out of here, you're on the phone to Clark.
Liza, what is wrong with me? You fell in love. I mean, I'm a, I'm a reasonably intelligent woman. How could I be so stupid? No, no. Naive is more like it. Will you ever forgive me for what I put you through? Are you kidding? You've always been there for me. Always. Just my turn, that's all. Thanks. You know, with our luck, maybe we should just give up on men. Okay, bad suggestion. <laughs> I really appreciate you letting me stay at your place for a while. Are you kidding? It's gonna be like old times, you know? Sleepovers, summer camp, cheap white wine. Oh, no. What? I left my purse at the house, my credit cards, my driver's license, everything is in that purse. It's all right, we'll get it in the morning. I don't want to go back. Hey, don't worry, all right? No one's going to mess with me. feel good about this. Let's just make it quick, okay? Oh, don't, don't worry about it. it. Oh, my God. You know, I don't, I don't know if this was such a good idea. Maybe we should just go. Oh, we'll be fine. All right. Help, help me find my bag. Sure. Great. Let's just go. Sure. And look, I know you think I'm paranoid, okay? But... What? Won't start. My cell phone is gone. Oh, you probably left it in the house. No, it was right here. I know it. Huh? Where are you going? Uh, we'll call from the house. Liza! Liza! I tell you what, you make the call, I gotta pee. Can't you just hold it? How long have you known me? Enough. my neighbor's house, okay? But it's only about a quarter of a mile down the road. We can use the phone there. Liza. Liza, come on. I really want to get out of here, okay? It's not funny. Liza?
I knew you weren't there that night. Oh, God. I took care of the real witness. Get out of here. Go to car. Get out of here. Uh, don't do don't don't do this. Oh, but I want to. Ty, don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you. I said go. <laughs> Besides, they already know who I am. You see, I, I kind of slipped up the other night. Canaan Point. <laughs> Don't die! Honey, please don't go. I'm so sorry. Come on, stay with me. Bye, Liza. I love you.